Good morning and a blessed Monday morning to you. Let's continue in our study in Paul's great letter to the church at Philippi, and we'll pick up where we left off last Monday. We're in the fourth chapter, and let's start in verse 8. The Apostle Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes this. Finally, beloved, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Such a rich, rich section of God's holy word. And let's break down some words. Back up into verse 8. Finally, beloved, whatever is true. John, the 17th chapter, says that the word of God is true. So the word, then, is that which determines that which is something is true or false. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable. In other words, worthy of respect. Interestingly, the, the word comes from the term worship, that which is worthy of adoration. So whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just. In other words, that which is right in accordance with God's unchangeable standard, his holy word. Whatever is pure or morally clean, whatever is pleasing. What a beautiful word here that talks about that which is sweet and gracious and generous and lovely. Whatever is commendable. In other words, whatever is highly regarded. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, whatever is commendable. All of these things are defined by the word of God. Then notice what it says. Going on in the second part or last part of verse 8. If there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. It is true, isn't it? Echoed in Holy Scripture that that which we think about can express itself. In other words, godly living is rooted in godly thinking. I reminded my elementary school days and I had a teacher that would oftentimes during the course of the class say, okay, everyone put on their thinking caps. I wasn't quite sure what the teacher was meaning but there was some type of image that now it was a serious time for some serious, serious thinking. Put on our thinking caps. When we ponder that theologically, what we see in Holy Scripture is that by nature, we have a problem with our thinking. What we wanna do is we wanna determine for ourselves that which is true. A dangerous statement can be, well, I just know how it is that I feel. No, the more important statement would be to say, what does God have to say on the subject? Our thinking then can be so affected by sin. That sinfulness, that sinfulness of our thinking was born by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and God is at work to transform our thinking. He transforms our hearts into believers in him. And he is at work transforming our thoughts. I think of what Paul writes in Romans, the eighth chapter. Those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Or Romans, the twelfth chapter. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds 
so that you may discern what is the will of God, what's good and acceptable and perfect. I love in Acts, the 17th chapter, about the Bereans, where it says that they examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. So, let's put on our thinking caps each and every day, and let us think in concert and in accordance with the word of Almighty God. Let's pray together, please. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your holy word. We give you thanks for today and for the opportunity to serve and to praise your holy name. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that our thinking will be formed by your word and that you would send us forth as bold proclaimers of your truth, your word. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord richly bless you today and this week. May he use you to his holy glory. Encourage someone 